You've been wanting to learn how to code for a long time, but for some reason, you haven't managed to move forward. You haven't managed to make any progress. Why is it that you've been trying for so long to learn how to code and you still haven't managed to make any progress? Not to talk about, you know, getting a job eventually, but just to complete your first course or your first meaningful project. First of all, I want to tell you, you're not alone. I personally struggled with this for a very long time as well. It took me years before I even was able to complete my first programming course, CS50. So in this video, I want to give you some tips that helped me get over all the obstacles that were preventing me from achieving my goals in computer science. Look, let's be honest, coding can be somewhat boring sometimes, so we push it off. You know, maybe we're excited when we begin to learn, but then after that excitement wears off and the assignments come in and we get stuck in the assignment and we can't figure out how to solve it, then we say, you know what, let's take a break, we'll come back to it later. And sometimes that break could take you know, it could be weeks long. So the first thing that was holding me back was my distractions. Now, I definitely consider myself as maybe being on the spectrum of ADHD. And so I like a lot of things. Um, I have a lot of hobbies. I love making things, creating things. And so in, in my average day, I, I would have a lot of things going on. So for me, it was very difficult to focus, to take those two hours of the day and just focus on coding. I would sit down maybe for 15 minutes, I would get going, I would start to get some kind of momentum, and then an email would come in, a WhatsApp would come in, Facebook, the Facebook curiosity would creep in, and I would go on Facebook, and maybe I would come back to the coding, but then at that point, my momentum was just totally lost, and I was just too distracted. I didn't even want to admit it to myself that I was distracting myself to avoid the pain that comes with getting the job done. In order to achieve anything in life, for example, if you want to gain some muscle, you have to go through some pain. And I was just distracting myself to avoid that pain. So my advice to you is, you need to cut all of your distractions. The second thing that I noticed, something that's known as imposter syndrome. For some reason, I just felt like this is not me. So especially at the beginning, it was very hard for me to convince myself, basically to look at myself in the mirror and to lie to my face. You are good enough. You can do this. And although this was a very uncomfortable feeling, I still managed to go for it and to embrace the discomfort. And I realized, you know what? When you want to grow in life, growth usually Usually comes from putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. The third thing that I struggle with was laziness. Laziness has many forms. To me, it was that even though I had scheduled every day for 2 p.m. that I would sit down and code, I still had an excuse every day of why that time wasn't good for me, why I needed to push that off to tomorrow. You know, I'll just get it done tomorrow, or I'll get it done tonight, and then the night would come and I'd be too tired, so I'd say I'll do it tomorrow, and then tomorrow came and there'd be a different excuse of why I need to change it again. I didn't set those two hours as a non-flexible commitment that I need to attend to. Instead, I made that part of the day as something that was optional. And every day I found a different excuse for why I can't code right now. Now, in reality, I was just covering up for my laziness. I was trying, again, to delay the pain from comes from having to do something hard. And I would just get myself busy with other types of low paying jobs or tasks that I didn't really need to do. And what I like to call fake hustle and fake productivity. The fourth thing that I went through was analysis paralysis. In those days, 2014, there were a ton of options to learn how to code. Today, you have maybe 10 times the amount of options. In those days, we had Coursera, Harvard, MIT, Free Code Camp. So I remember one day I signed up for like five Coursera courses. I did maybe like half a day of one of them. And then I found out about the MIT courses and and then I just kind of wasted some time over there and then I went to a free code camp and I wasted more time over there. Eventually I found CS50 and I tried CS50 for like, like about a week and then I gave up. I said, oh, it's too hard. So I kind of just took a step back and tried to figure out, oh, what is the best way to learn how to code? Which is the best route? And you know what? I ended up not taking any route. So in my opinion, the best route is the one that you take because regardless of which route you take, it's going to be hard, most likely. It's going to be a learning experience. <laughs> 
and you will come out of it a better person you will gain some coding skills along the way so don't sit there and over analyze things just go for what you have are you doing free code camp just go for it are you doing cs50 just finish cs50 if you choose one track stay on that one track don't go now and for example start cs50 do uh two weeks over there and, and now two weeks later doing free code camp and then that's not good enough now so now you also have to do python for everybody which is a uh, university of michigan <laughs> stop just do one track pick one track and finish it finish the entire course and then think about okay where should i go after this but the important thing right now is that you commit to one thing and you follow through in terms of laziness in terms of procrastination again the key is take a calendar and mark mark off two hours per day that you're going to sit down and just code you're not gonna have your phone on you you're not gonna check your emails you're not gonna be on social media you're gonna be sitting literally with two tabs open on your computer on one tab you have your course in my case it was cs50 and on the other tab you have your coding environment and that's all you need you don't need to be doing anything other than that so i remember in 2014 i tried for the first time to learn how to code then i gave it up it took me about seven years to get back into coding but when i came back i really made the commitment it was very hard S sometimes it seemed impossible but i really made that commitment that for two hours a day no matter what what i need to do is to sit down and code and in my case things did get better